Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. Natasha Pulley's latest book. Uh, hi, welcome to Book Hunt. Uh, if you're new here, my name's Nell, and I am a hedonist who reads for pleasure and to learn about the world uh, from new perspectives. I really like literary fiction, historical fiction, a bit of fantasy, and if you want to wrap all of those into one author, that would be Natasha Pulley. Oh my god. I've got to say thank you to Katie from Books and Things for pointing, for doing a review a couple of years ago of The Watchmaker of Filigree Street. Um, she is the reason I picked up my first Natasha Pulley book and I've had such a great time with every single novel that I have read from Natasha. I fucking loved this. This was so fun. I read it in two days. I wanted to read it in one sitting, but I just couldn't stay awake long enough. And then Scott made me go to some lunch thing and it took me two days. I was really mad. Um, I wasn't, but you know, we want to stay with the book sometimes. Um, this is Natasha Pulley's like fourth or fifth book. I've read everything she's written. I will probably do some more videos about her and her work at some point in the near future. Um, if there is something that she has written that you have not read and would like a review of, please let me know in the comments because I will prioritise doing that. Um, what is this about? So Natasha Pulley is, for those of you who have not read her before, um, she writes historical fiction, usually with some kind of queer romance and magical elements. Um, her books are very plotty and the plots are very intricate and fast paced and um, often quite mysterious and suspenseful so you're often being led along by breadcrumbs um, while all of this stuff is going on trying to put together a bigger picture um, and this book was most of those things. This is the first one that I've read from Natasha Pulley that didn't have some kind of magical element and I actually have to say it's the best one she's written so far. So I don't know if she's just getting better or if the magical element is a bit whimsical and not necessarily right for every story but I really feel like this was better characterised and there were moments of literary just daylight for me. Um, there were a couple of lines when she was establishing her themes that I just thought really drilled down, like brought an image through that echoed the path we were on and, and really um, reinforced what she was trying to say. I should tell you what it's about. <laughs> um, so... This one is set in Cold War Russia. Uh, we start in Siberia. Our central character is in a gulag. Um, I was always going to pick this book up because it was Natasha Pulley, but if you wanted to sell me on a book any harder than by adding her name to the cover, tell me it's set in a gulag because I have family from Eastern Europe and my great aunt went, was sent to a gulag for 10 years. So um, having not had a great deal of contact with that side of my family, it's a very interesting part of history to me because of the very loose family connection. Um, so I was always going to read this. Uh, the representation of an authoritarian communist state was awesome. I really felt like it got the difference between economic difficulties, um, authoritarianism, corruption, and what communism is and is not supposed to be. Um, so it was, I guess what I'm saying is it wasn't written through a Cold War American lens. Awesome. It did acknowledge the enormous level of atrocity that went on in that region in this time period, uh, including the central concept, which is based around the real life massive nuclear accident that happened in Russia in 1957. Well, it happened in 1958, but the book says 1957. Um, in the late 50s that they just tried to cover up. <laughs> That's basically what they did. They tried to pretend it didn't happen. They tried to um, evacuate as few people as possible and not tell the people who were left in neighbouring towns what had happened. They tried lots of things to keep it under wraps. And that's that's the setting for the book. Uh, so we have this Siberian biochemist uh, chemist who gets 
uh, call, basically called up, um, picked up from his gulag and dropped in this research facility set up on the site of this hush hush nuclear accident where they're all pretending there was never a nuclear accident and like the whole place isn't highly irradiated um and it go and it goes from there i loved all the characters i loved the reappearance of an octopus although this one is a real biological octopus for those who have read uh, the watchmaker of filigree street this is not a clockwork octopus it's a real one um i really enjoyed the romance i really enjoyed the whole thing from start to finish i loved the central character um there's just there's there's nothing super negative to say about this i am gonna make a whole separate video talking about gender and sexuality and natasha pulley so i don't want to get into that too much in this video um though natasha pulley has a te tendency to make the central part of the story wrap around a homosexual romance and so i find that she doesn't have as many female characters at the center of the narrative as may otherwise happen with a woman writer um but she does really love to put her female characters in positions of power and in positions of academic excellence particularly in stem subjects so it was not surprising to see a woman running a uh, a lab and a woman being the head physicist at a reactor site all of those things uh and i just think that's awesome um i think that kind of representation is important and great we should see more of it because there's heaps of women in science let's look at them they're cool um yeah that's all i want to say it's a massive just um just read it read it read it read it read it read it um i think i'm gonna record my video about natasha pulley and gender like basically now so it should be out i hope for you in the next couple of weeks um if you want to see it make sure you subscribe okay love you bye